Aki Hayakawa is blunt, reclusive, and seemingly stoic. He can be rough around the edges and ruthless in multiple ways, and bereft of context and knowledge of who he is, one could be forgiven for mistakenly assuming that he's hardened himself in response to his experiences and learned to be uncaring. But in reality, that isn't true at all, and just a short amount of time spent with him would peel back the thin layers, break the brittle veneer, and make the truth explicitly clear. He isn't cold or detached. In actuality, Aki cares so much. He is given no end of reasons for why he shouldn't care, and yet, he cares and endures. He feels and feels until his heart seems ready to burst, and in a setting that constantly gives evidence for why it would be so much easier to just close oneself off and give up on all of that, that is what makes him special. Aki grew up as a relatively normal, pretty happy, if slightly unsociable child, but one day had everything horrifically snatched from him when the gun devil destroyed his home and killed his family. He was later inducted into public safety as a devil hunter, with his ultimate goal of getting revenge and slaying the gun devil in mind. He got a partner, he trained, and he readied himself for a one-way ticket to hell in this reckless search before experiencing more and more blood, terror, and death. And so given all that he's experienced and what he went through to get here, you'd expect Aki to turn cold like so many of his colleagues do. But he really hasn't. If anything, he stayed exactly the same, or arguably even more caring than he was before, perhaps understanding how important it is to value ephemeral things. And this innocence Aki has, the fact that he can feel this excruciating pain and not be hardened by his experiences, is a true miracle. As postulated by Himeno, with so much death and heartbreak in this excuse for a world, people learn to shut themselves off and force their tears to run dry. They have to, or they're liable to be destroyed from the inside out by the agony. But no matter the horrors he's seen, Aki refuses to do that. And that's why he's so strong. With his heart on his sleeve, he feels harder than anyone. He can't stand loss, and he doesn't want to see others get hurt. And even when both of those things happen, he is wholly willing and able to make connections all over again. Unlike someone like Denji, who has essentially been forced to close himself off from deep emotions to survive despite clearly desiring intimate connections deep down, Aki is abnormal in this story through his normality in spite of the terrifying circumstances. From an outside perspective, he almost lives like one would expect another to live in a world that rewards putting oneself out there, that breeds confidence and vulnerability and doesn't dish out pain nearly often enough for this to become an instinctual fear for so many. How on earth does he do it? How does he find the strength within himself to go on? Himeno has never figured it out, and instead looked on with admiration. Denji is perplexed, others observe him quizzically. And I'm not sure Aki himself even knows, but he is absolutely one of a kind. He has not grown numb, and he simply lives with natural impulse. He feels his way through life, dead set on vengeance against the gun devil for his family, but undercutting that goal through some other heartfelt things he does for those he cares for. And along with caring for Aki, Himeno sees beauty in that miracle. She cannot bring herself to open up to emotion like he does, and so she shuts herself off with vices. Smoking, alcohol, deflections through flirting and spontaneity and perversions. Because she can't find it within herself to be vulnerable in a world primed to hurt her. Yet in Aki, she finds herself deeply admiring his specific strength. The strength to be weak. There is a raw human beauty in being able to open oneself up to feeling when those feelings are so negative and devastating so often, and very few are able to do it. But Aki is one of them. Aki can cry. And so Himeno, while obviously caring for him and wanting the best for him, needs him to live on to prove that the world can still accommodate that sort of sensitivity and vulnerability and emotion, even if most can't find it within themselves to do so. And to be cried for herself in such a cold world? What an honor, what a joy that would be. 
Aki needs to live. Because he is a beacon of hope and idealism no matter how much so many aspects of him may indicate the contrary. And because Himeno needs to know that the world isn't quite as cruel as she thinks. Aki needs to live to carry on the torch and show that people shouldn't be scared to feel. It's an arduous path, terrifying and painful, and it seems excessively lonely, but by its very nature it needs not necessarily be so all the time if one persists as Aki does. So it just so happens that the one person in the world who deeply knew and understood him became confident through her experiences that he would persist. And so appropriately, after Himeno makes the decision to die for him to carry on like this, he proves her right. By doing exactly what she loved about him, and through fulfilling her wish to him by crying his eyes out in grief. Aki shoulders so much, the weight of his parents and brother dying, the responsibility thrust upon him by himself, the death of Himeno, the well-being of those he now lives with. And with all of this, the vast, vast majority would find it a necessity to harden themselves and close themselves off from feeling anything. But Aki can't. He refuses to. It's not in him. Even if he wanted to, even if he were to try, he is not built to shut himself away and cut off his connections. And the fact that he is like this, that he still cares and connects and cries, offers such a sad but powerful modicum of hope for the story. As long as he lives, those who admire him and those with an inability to feel can seek vicarious fulfillment and the slightest hints of optimism through him. And this shows no signs of stopping anytime soon, as even with the death of his long-term partner, Aki still has so much to care for. He has stumbled into finding this sort of dysfunctional family with Denji and power, and he wants to protect that. Because he spits in defiance at the world when it tries to tell him that his desires and values are impossible, and because until the end, he will never stop being who he is. Because even if you get burned, living with hope and staying heartfelt until the end is always worth it for the value it can bring. He has been told that he only has two more years to live, and though he walks with death on his shoulder, he will not allow that to define him. He will not let it scare him into submitting and living a life he cannot stand. In the face of cynicism, Aki is going to cry and feel and struggle until the end to live in the way he desires, and he will not shy away from that. And that is the beauty of his character. Many thanks for watching.